Greetings and welcome to the very first episode of Macon County Movie Club. I'm your host, Ryan Stockstead. Pretty soon, this whole place is going to be just full of people. Uh, that's because I've invited a bunch of my friends over for a mystery movie night. What are we going to watch? I don't know yet. Stick around. Let's find out. and three of my friends have each brought a movie for tonight. It'll be up to the audience to vote on the movie they actually want to watch. Now normally, we're going to have a theme for every episode, but since this is the pilot, uh, we're just calling it Wild Card Night. Anything goes. With that in mind, I picked a movie I've never seen before, Rollerblade, from 1986. Let's meet the other hosts. I'm Matt, and I also brought something I've never seen before, in this case, it is 1979's The Visitor, a.k.a. Strigulum? I think it's Strigulum? Strigulum, I says. It's Italian. Hi, my name is Kate, and I also haven't seen my movie pick, which is 1973's Lady Snowblood. Hey guys, I'm Michael, and my choice of films today is Sky Sharks, which came out just last year. I haven't seen it yet, or even opened the DVD. My movie is a Japanese movie from 1973, uh, inspired Quentin Tarantino in his Kill Bill movie, Lady Snowblood, a, a young child born and raised to wreak vengeance on the men who raped her mother and killed her father and brother. Uh, Lady Snowblood is a vicious, bloody extravaganza of artistic blood spatter, beautifully choreographed action sequences, an amazing umbrella sword. Big fan of the umbrella sword. I would really love to watch this. I hope you guys would really love to watch it. That is Lady Snowblood. <laughs> My movie is 1979's The Visitor. So some people have seen it, I guess, yes? So the main reason I chose this one tonight is because I've always kind of thought of it as a, a hole in my cinematic cult movie viewing. Um, it's pretty well known as a, a pretty bad and or crazy, not necessarily bad, but insane film. <laughs> So uh, it's got that going for it. Uh, the trailer, of course, will show you the main reason you need to watch it, because it just looks that much. <laughs> Aside from two of cinema's most highly regarded tough guy directors, John Huston and Sam Peckinpah, this also stars Lance Henriksen, Shelley Winters, original Django, Franco Nero, who might be playing Jesus. 
We'll only find out if you vote for The Visitor. Oh, that movie's so good. Uh, the movie I picked for tonight is Roller Blade from 1986. Now, I want to point out that's Roller Space Blade, not Roller Blade, the branded inline skating company. While that company kind of sort of existed, it wasn't really a thing. So you're not going to see any Roller Blades in this movie. Roller Blade is a sleazy, post-apocalyptic, sci-fi action adventure movie where roller skating nuns fight a fascist dictator and his uh, uh, sidekick puppet. Yes, all those words do go together. Um, <laughs> This is the quality of movie that, uh, that I thought I should bring to the first Macon County Movie Club. I hope you guys will vote for it too. A, a few more points about Donald D G. Jackson. He's the director of Baby Ghost and he directed this movie. Um, he's probably best known for directing Hell Comes to Frogtown. Yeah! Woo! Yeah. And uh, many of you probably saw Roller Gator with the rapping pink alligator. I'm a mean motor gator, a rock and roller skater. Anyway, with that, with that in mind, please vote for uh, by far the most obscure movie of the night. Also, definitely the sleaziest movie of the night, and that includes Kate's. Witness the clash of two forces in a cataclysmic duel that explodes in an exciting climax of raw power and passion. Experience the ultimate futuristic fantasy adventure on wheels. Roller Blade from New World Pictures. Oh, New World Pictures. That's Some of you guys know I'm a big fan of shark movies, and uh, they're all, with a few exceptions, terrible. And then uh, what you might not know is Ryan and I are actually working on what is going to be the absolute best bad shark movie. Uh, so the shark movies have been on my mind lately. And there is uh, Swamp Shark and Snow Shark and Avalanche Shark and House Shark. And what I brought today, Sky Sharks. Sky Sharks are much more than just genetically manipulated animals. They're perfect weapon systems. Zombie Nazis and flying sharks, what more could you want? And honestly, I, I, I don't know if I need to say any more. Um, I'm going to. So it stars a guy named Thomas Morris, who is in, among other things, Schindler's List, which clearly prepared him for his role in Sky Sharks. Uh, also in this is, and I'm not going to pronounce her last name at all, Barbara Nettle Jacoba? Barbara, call me if, uh, if we're wrong on that. Or call, call me if we're right, actually. Also in this is Tony Todd, who you know from Hatchet and Hatchet 2 and Final Destination and Final Destination 2 and Sushi Girl and, of course, most importantly, Candyman and Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. Oddly, Amanda Burse is in this as well, who um, you may or may not remember from Married with Children and probably nothing else. Nothing I can recall anyway. Fright Night, Fraternity Oh, Fright Night, that's right, that's right. She was in Fright Night. <laughs> uh, also, Larpar Lincoln's in this. Yeah. Um, she was in uh, Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood, and, uh, oh, and House 2, uh, Second story? story, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Lynn Lowry, of course, who yes. you all know from Crazies and Cat People and Shivers, uh, and a guy named Travis Love from The Walking Dead, just to bring up somebody more recent. But yeah, so uh, Sky Sharks. Zombies, flying sharks, it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be really, really fucking terrible. <laughs> Do the count that uh, confirms the first results. So that voting was much more intense than I expected. Uh, I'll just say that 
uh, there were three movies that were taking all the votes. Nobody gave a shit about Sky Sharks. We got <laughs> we got one vote for Sky Sharks. So <laughs> so perhaps in the future, saying, "Oh, this movie's going to be bad. Maybe that's not going to work next." I thought time. honesty is the best policy. <laughs> So Sky Sharks comes in last with one vote. Um, there's a tie for second. Uh, the way we do the voting, you vote for your first and your second choice. So um, it's a weighted point value. So it, whatever your first pick is worth two points, whatever your second pick is worth one point. So we have 11 points for Lady Snowblood and 11 points for Rollerblade, which means we are going to be watching The Visitor, a.k.a. Strigulum, with literally 12 points. So he eked it out with just one extra point. Yeah, so... Um, I secretly changed the Hunter with Sasha. Let's see it. <laughs> Let's see if they know this. Um, Let's do this thing. Let's start the movie. <laughs> he transformed himself into an eagle and managed to destroy them all. All right, well, the movie just ended. Uh, we just got done watching The Visitor. Matt, since you picked that, uh, why don't you get us started? What the hell did we just watch? Um, I think we just saw The Visitor from 1979, directed yeah. by Giulio Paradisi, though he's credited as Michael J. Paradise here, which I guess just sounds cooler. And yeah, an Americanization. A little, uh, yeah. I felt a little bit under Django'd, a little Django gypped, a little, uh, I was expecting more no, a he, Franco Nero's blonde Jesus, Franco and I don't Nero, know what happened with that. Like Franco Nero is like doing a cameo of one day of work for his buddy because it's like an Italian film, and that yeah. It, he was just doing the rap. He's not starring in the movie at all. Too. Well, starring in it is legendary director John Huston, mm -hmm. yeah. for starters, right off the top. But uh, past that, as far as what's going on in the story, I'm not sure I'm qualified. Okay. Uh, they had it figured out much more so than I did. I, there's birds. There's bird attacks <laughs> to the level of like the birds almost. Yeah, yeah. No, birds um, are a theme. Birds are definitely a sign. Yeah, bird, birds are absolutely like a, a director <laughs> trademark or something in this movie. He's like John wooing it to the nth degree. We do start with a sort of blondie wraparound Tales from the Dark Side thing where Franco Nero is talking to some children, a bunch of little, uh, little bald kids who really looked like they had their heads shaved. Like, I didn't see any bald caps on these kids. It, yeah. it really was like. Bring me a bunch of extras and zoom. Yeah, no, they shaved some kids' heads for this movie, for sure. <laughs> and he was sort of telling the story of... Uh, yeah, the, the kids are the kids are like... Um, they're descendants of Satin, which is clearly Satan. Like, it, there's a religious sort of allegory thing going on here. But, like, basically, uh, the, the kids have this DNA from, like, Satin. And... John Huston's character, I guess, I'm not clear if he's supposed to be God. At first I thought he's he was sort of God. God. Yeah. Well, they call him a general. Yeah, and he goes to, he goes to Earth to get, there's going to be a new child with DNA of Satine, and she, well, she's already on the Earth, but she's like about to turn eight years old, and that's sort of the setup, is that he's going to go, well, he says he's going to, like, he's not there to hurt the child, he's there to, like, save the child, but, like, then, of course, the child is, like, kind of evil. Kind of. Yeah, and it's not a pure reincarnation thing because they make comments about the mother's womb being special so that yeah. she can give birth to multiple That's right. accelerated children. Yeah. So it's an idea that like they say she's the only one in this generation, the implication being there are multiple generations of these sateen well, births. Want, well, and also this is just Earth, so we don't yeah. know where the other ones... They could be throughout the yeah. universe. Yeah. Now, now, the other thing here with this, this sateen stuff is like the... Uh, the mother has only given birth to one child, and yeah. she doesn't want to give birth anymore. Yeah. She knows something's wrong. And and there's like this cabal, like like yeah. this sort of like evil Illuminati. cabal Illuminati team. Yeah. And they're they've got they've installed uh, Lance Henriksen 
to marry her and father children from her. But yeah. it's been seven and a half years, more than seven, it's almost eight years, and he's only sired one child. And so they're kind of like, you need to get it going and get no. another kid. No, that no. That isn't his child. It's not his child. So that was her child from another marriage. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we don't know who the dad is, I don't think. But he's been trying for a while, and yes. she just is not having it. Yeah, yeah, so we well, have she this. She doesn't want any more children because she knows she's there's something wrong inside. Uh, well, I don't want any more children, Raymond. You crazy, Mama. Well, part of it is like this is part of what's confusing, but they set it up. The girl has like magic powers. She does. That's part of why yeah. right. John Houston is heading there is because like she's got all these magic powers, and we already saw her manipulate her dad. Basketball game, and we keep saying girl, but she's not like the bad seed or Macaulay Culkin's asshole, evil kid, whatever. She's like Satan power. She's got some kind of supernatural abilities. Like she's her eyes end up looking like marbles, and then she does things. That's not the end of the game, then. I'm sorry, if the, ga- if the ball explodes, uh, I-, I don't think that counts as the end of the game. I think they would I'm, take it back with another ball and figure out first what happened. The and, like, are there rules for ball explosions? In no, the because NBA? that never happens. I think you're going to get caught on one of those Air Bud style uh, technicalities yeah. <laughs> where yeah. the rule book doesn't say anything about exploding balls. So right, if yeah. your balls so, explode, you yeah. know. Is it her aunt? It's her it's the mother's sister, right? Goes to yeah. get goes shopping for a gift. And she finds oh, this creepy. creepy, but kind of cool looking bird. And so she's like, I'm gonna get that. But it's creepy because it keeps saying, I'm a pretty bird, <laughs> over it and over again. I'm a pretty bird. Look, if you're buying a toy for a kid that's gonna make a lot of noise, it's a bad gift. Yeah. It's a yeah. bad yeah. gift. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but it is a better gift than a handgun, even though yeah. this takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a slightly yeah. better gift than a gun, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, my sweet. And shoots her mother in the spine. Yeah. So for the rest of the movie, she's she's in a wheelchair. Nobody Which, seems to care much about it. No, like it's never a big. Like she's her daughter much better after she's paralyzed her. It's very odd. It is very odd because this movie has a bit of a like um, the Omen kind of feel, yeah. where the mom at the beginning is sort of afraid of the kid, and the kid has this like in the Omen, the kid has like a Rottweiler or something. In this movie, the kid has a, a hawk, like yeah. a fucking pet hawk that flies around the the, the room all the time. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So so she's now in a wheelchair, which which leads to. The greatest insult I've heard in a movie in, in years. You don't think he's a child molester, do you? <laughs> of course not. The agency screens out their sitters very well. What about you? Aren't you a cripple molester? Well, I would be if I gave you a chance. She accuses, uh, jokingly, Lance Henriksen of being a cripple molester. <laughs> and for the rest of the movie, we just couldn't stop saying cripple molester. <laughs> cripple molester. This movie should have definitely been called Cripple Molester. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly Winters versus this kid is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the fight between them. I would win their blood rest. Oh my god! He would never do that today. That was not a stunt girl. That was just an actor who run in front of a bus. <laughs> it only happens in Atlanta, man. <laughs> so she gets to get whacked. She has to take the short bus to school? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god! There was that amazing scene where she's ice skating. It's a it's a great and totally pointless scene. Yeah. And she goes there and then starts picking fights on these kids, yeah. these sixteen year olds. And they're ready to kick her ass. Yeah. 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 Her and she takes them all down. Why wouldn't a whole gang of sixteen year old boys just try and In beat up on an eight year old girl? Yeah, yeah. And I no see. adults anywhere try to stop her. <laughs> Big mother. 
motherfucker! John Houston shows up as like the babysitter. Well, of course. Yeah, as as he does. Um, and what's interesting there is that he uh, he makes it clear to the girl that uh, he's not there to hurt her, and they seem to be on the same page. Like she seems to know what he's talking about. He tells her that she belongs somewhere else. She shouldn't be here on Earth. That she has special powers, and she's just like finally an adult that talks my language. <laughs> Another world, another time, another existence, other beings. Why did you come here? Well, first she has to kick his ass at Pong. Because aside yeah. from being evil, her main thing is that she's right. good at Pong. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And, and, and. the hang of this. You used your powers to make it go faster. No, no, I didn't. I used the switch. So Glenn Ford is deeply suspicious. We have no real idea why, because there's no background given for Glenn Ford at all. We're, we're led to believe that he's the cop is assigned to investigate. How did this gun wind up this kid's party and shoot this guy? And we also get the impression that uh, this kid has already been extremely rude to him. Isn't there something that you'd like to say to me that you haven't said before. Yeah. Hey, what's that? What you say? No. He goes back to the house because he's still suspicious, finds this jeweled bird, takes I'm a pretty it bird. with him. I'm a pretty bird. I'm a pretty bird. I'm a pretty bird. It's starting to drive him crazy and make him drive erratically, so he throws it in the glove box, at which point this girl's hawk. <laughs> Stunt guy on a motorcycle does a goddamn stunt that yeah. is just. I'm, I'd be horrified. He's probably like the mom. He's, he's probably wheelchair bound after him. Grant Page and, yeah. and the man from Hong Kong could definitely give that Italian guy a run for the money, especially because the Italian guy looks like he's probably paraplegic now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and by the time all this ends, he's now his car is wrapped up in the train link fence. Somehow the brass is caught by. Yeah, the so soccer they, fields they burn up all the time. Yeah. Well, and they can't get to him because the chain link fence is completely wrapped around his car. Which, which I will say that's kind of an awesome bit. Are you still here? Why, yes, I am. Where's my old whipping boy? One of the greatest, <laughs> like, comeuppance moments in... And they're great fake slaps. They look I, real. I don't, oh, know, they're not I don't fake know if they were slaps. fake. Yeah. I think Shelly Winters hit the shit out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, Come I on. think... Uh, Shelly really? Winters? Yeah. I think she fucking hold up. John Houston walks in, and she's sitting there in a wheelchair, and he basically tells her that she's been impregnated. And she starts wheeling herself around in circles repeatedly once he disappears <laughs> over and over, like like it's some kind of cartoon. But the scene goes on for about three or four minutes. She just, and then she finally goes out the door after him. Yeah. She and goes to see to a doctor oh. that she knows. You know, this is kind of shaky, maybe. That was so, like, oh that, was make, that was making me uncomfortable. It was making me, I thought he was somehow involved, but no, he was just he was, overly shaking the He baby. was just some extra. <laughs> I he, that was a, you get the sense that it was like okay let's we're gonna pair up a kid with an adult kid with an adult okay we'll take that <laughs> baby parent. how about you sir and then Bad all right he's like I've never <laughs> held a baby before is this fine is this okay is this how I should hold it I don't know what you guys are talking about I wanted more baby shaking <laughs> like I've got a whole series of baby shaking videos at home if you guys want to ever check those out well we'll save that for you next know. theme week baby shaking week baby shaking. also. Uh, we, I can't believe we made it this far without mentioning the greatest score in movie history. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they repeat it like every 13, 10, 15 minutes, but that score rock. That song's going to be in my it head. It was before. so loud, though. It was startling. Needlessly loud. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was like they got a goblin B-side, <laughs> and they put it on 11, and then about just intermittently throughout, they said, just, just. Put it on here. <laughs> Just put it on here. And it didn't well, always no, fit. It, it didn't always make happen. sense when it was when it was happening though. It's like wait, what? It's this da da, and then something da da, when something da da worthy would happen. Yeah. And other times it would just no. be like John Houston going. 
Da -da! <laughs> like he would just sort of slide into frame. She'll be eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> So then it seems like it's going to kind of end pretty quickly, but instead they, uh, there's just a whole series of like kind of baffling stuff that does it only loosely sort of connects. Like there's this fun house sequence. Bastard. Bastard. Final assessment. It's a bad movie. It's a mess. But is it still worth watching? Should people seek it out? That's the question. If they like this genre, sure. All right. To me, it's totally worth the price of permission every time. It's so bonkers that if you want to see something that's just unclassifiable, weird, and exciting, and bizarre, it mostly will, will uh, satisfy you. It, obviously, you're right. It's totally a mess. There's so many problems. But I still like it. It's crazy. It's a mess. It's out there. It's confusing. But it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, around the fun house, I got my interest sort of disappeared. <laughs> um, but then, and, and for about maybe 10, 15 minutes, I was like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on and I don't care. <laughs> but uh, but then after that, it I, 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 you know, pulled me back in. Um, but yeah, I think it's worth watching. Uh, the, the way uh, tonight's picks worked out, you guys all chose movies that you'd never seen before, myself included. Um, I thought I'd give you guys a chance to recommend something that you have seen before. Uh, what's a movie that you uh, really like that you want to recommend to the audience at home that they should go check out? Let's start with Mike first. Uh, well, the cult movie that everyone knows is, is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Everyone's seen that. However, the sequel, Shock Treatment, you know, it has some of the same characters, but the, 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 the characters are the same are played by different actors. And then the actors that are in it are playing different characters, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, but I think that movie's ahead of its time. It's, it's, it's ripping on what would become you know, reality television. The whole thing takes place uh, in, in, a, in a soundstage. And the music's fantastic. <laughs> be pathetically crazy about shock treatment. Trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> My pick will be, I'm gonna go back to the mid 80s as well, and I just happen to always have a copy on me of uh, Neon <laughs> Maniacs. Neon Maniacs. At some point, the village people all died. They got sucked into uh, some other dimension and came back as sort of zombies, and they lived in the Golden Gate Bridge together and they come out at night to kill teenagers. And they can only be hurt by water. And it's not really but, the village people. I just but they are like, it's like, you it's say, essentially the village people. No, I know, but I'm just saying, I just want to clarify, because people might think that this is a village people This movie. is a direct sequel to Can't Stop the Music. <laughs> also, I have to mention, uh, my uncle is in this and he is killed in it. Yeah, yeah that's right. His, Your uncle... Uh, he plays is, a cop and he's, uh, he's hanged. What's his name? He's an actor. What uh, Bo Sabato. Bo Sabato. Nice. He flips a coin, right? He flips a he coin. Flips a coin. Hey! The news he finds a coin and he's These are the neon maniacs. They live so others may die. Neon maniacs. Uh, my pick um, is. Uh, really the namesake of our show, uh, Macon County Line. If you've never seen it, it's one of the greatest car exploitation movies ever made. It's one of the greatest drive-in movies ever made. Um, this is a movie where uh, Jesse and Alan Vint are brothers and they roll into the wrong small town and bad things happen. And the sheriff is Max Bear Jr. who wrote the movie. So Jethro of the Beverly Hillbillies. And it's a total low budget movie that was a surprise hit when it came out in 1974, and it wound up being one of the highest grossing movies of the year. It's <laughs> violent and scary as hell, and just a badass movie. Highly recommend. It shouldn't have happened. It couldn't have happened. Jesus Christ, she's bleeding like crazy. But it did. What are you trying to kill us for? We haven't done anything, man! It happened on the Macon County line. <laughs> Macon County Line, 
a true story you won't be able to forget. Yeah, I'm going a little different direction here. I'm going for the 1983 film Local Hero. Oh. It's a Scottish film by the wonderful Scottish director Bill Forsyth. Um, it's about a Texas oil man who gets sent to a small town on the coast of, uh, a fictitious small town on the coast of Scotland, thinking he's gonna pull one over on the local yokels. Um, and quite the opposite happens. And the way it happens is wonderful. It's a whimsical movie, but it is not saccharine or precious. And the way they subvert stereotypes of these villagers and the oil man make them all the more human and just build out the character roles beautifully. It also has the first film soundtrack by Dire Straits' Mark Knopfler, and it is a classic synth-based score. Local Hero. <laughs> the story of an ordinary man who cared enough to do something extraordinary. Local hero. All right. Well, now uh, we're there gonna are draw the three theme pieces of paper here, Jess. Out of the skull, the 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 empty skull that has no longer got brains, it has strips of paper. With the theme that we're gonna be doing for the next episode, Matt, did you do the honor, seeing as how your movie was picked? Yeah. Uh, family film. Yeah. <laughs> this is not Matt's favorite genre. Matt is a horror guy through and through. I mean, so am I. I love horror, but uh, this is exciting to me. There are a lot of really bonkers um, family movies that, uh, I mean, first of all, how many cult filmmakers can you think of who dip their toe into making um, family films? There's a lot. I mean, I think probably even Jim Wynorski has made a whole bunch, you know? So uh, this should be fun. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. I don't know who's going to host the next episode. It may not be you guys. It may be you guys. I don't know. We'll see. I'm a pretty bird. All right. Thanks for watching the very first episode of Macon County Movie Club. Uh, join us next week as we tackle family films. Uh, be sure to follow us right here for new episodes every Friday, uh, right on through until the end of the year. You can find us on Instagram at LA Frankenstein Channel. I'll see you next week. Thank you.